Um, they've just had the conversation between the two leaders and you heard their press statements. Subsequently, Honorable Prime Minister of Japan has delivered a lecture. To give us a sense of the ongoing visit, we have the privilege of having a Foreign Secretary Sir with us, Shivanay Kwatra. Also joining us on the dais, Sri Sibi George, our ambassador to Japan, as well as Dr. Shilpa Kambole, Joint Secretary, East Asia and EMO. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you and very good afternoon to friends from the media. Uh, Prime Minister of Japan, His Excellency Mr. Fumio Kishida is on an official visit to India to meet with Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi ji. I would like to briefly explain to you the context of the visit, run through uh, elements of the program, give you also a sense of discussion between the two leaders and then touch upon briefly uh, on a couple of outcomes from the meeting. As you are aware, relations with Japan have always occupied a very special place for India. Japan is one of the very few countries with which India has a system of annual summits. In 2014, Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi made his first bilateral visit outside India, uh, immediate neighborhood to Japan. During that visit, the India-Japan relationship was upgraded to a special strategic and global partnership. Guided by strong political will on both sides, the partnership has made significant progress in the last few years, covering the entire gamut of mutual engagement as witnessed in the growing convergence of our political, strategic and economic interests. In fact, Prime Minister Modi has referred to the India-Japan relationship as being one of the most natural partnership in the region. India-Japan's special strategic and global partnership built on the shared values of democracy, freedom and respect for rule of law is crucial for fostering peace, prosperity and stability in the Indo-Pacific region. The last annual summit, that's the 14th annual summit, between Prime Minister Kishida and Honorable Prime Minister Modi took place in March of last year in New Delhi. Thereafter, in the past one year, the two Prime Ministers have met first in May 22 for the Quad Leader Summit in Tokyo and then during the visit of Honorable Prime Minister Shri Modi to Japan to attend the state funeral of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in September last year. 2022 marked also the 70th anniversary of India-Japan diplomatic relations. We celebrated this momentous years through various events in India and Japan. 2023 is a pivotal year for both India and Japan as chairs of the two major international groupings. India as the president of the G20 and Japan as the chair of G7. Our countries have the unique opportunity of converging our priorities on issues of significance and drive through that and in the process the global agenda. Through G20 presidency, India is working with partner countries, including Japan, to provide greater voice to issues of interest to developing countries, in particular the countries of the Global South, about which we have spoken in the past briefings also. Uh, very quickly, in terms of the program, uh, Prime Minister Kishida arrived in New Delhi earlier this morning, went to Rajghat thereafter to pay his tribute to Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, the two Prime Ministers then arrived at Herbert House for delegation level talks. The two leavers also delivered the press statements, which I'm sure you would have heard. It was followed by a restricted lunch meeting between the two Prime Ministers and their close associates. Thereafter, as you just recently uh, watched and heard, Prime Minister Kishida delivered a speech uh, uh, upstairs um, a short while ago. The two Prime Ministers will uh, later on visit the Buddha Janti Park, where they will visit the Baal Bodhi tree in the Buddha Janti Park. Uh, as per the current schedule, Prime Minister Kishida would be departing tomorrow morning. Uh, through these talks, the two leaders uh, have held substantive discussions 
which is corresponding and commensurate with the depth and expense of expanse of india japan engagement key topics that were discussed during the meeting uh, key topics of bilateral cooperation included the domain of defense and security economic partnership climate and energy including energy transition people to people exchanges skill development uh, innovation uh, the two leaders also discussed regional issues of significance including as you just heard in the speech uh, from uh, prime minister kishida the indo pacific they also talked about their own respective priorities uh, prime minister explained at length priorities of india's priorities for g20 and he heard in turn uh, prime minister kishida's priority uh, and japan's priorities for g7 these two also formed an important component of bilateral conversation in terms of concrete outcomes of the visit uh there were two documents that were signed on the sidelines one was the renewal of uh, moc memorandum of cooperation on japanese language that was originally signed in 2017 essentially focusing on higher level language learning and second uh, agreement which was uh, signed document which was signed was exchange of notes for the fourth tranche installment of JICA ODA loan of Japanese yen 300 billion um, on Mumbai Ahmedabad high speed railway project roughly Indian rupees 18000 crores uh we also announced 2023 as India Japan year of tourism uh prime minister did uh express his desire uh, with prime minister Kishida to declare the next year as the year of youth exchanges between the two countries uh ministry of environment of japan and ministry of environment forest and climate change of india they besides these two agreement also signed an aid memoir essentially on the joint accrediting mechanism that being that has been under discussion uh for quite some time between the two countries uh prime minister kishida as you all heard in uh, the remarks by the two prime ministers in Uh, to the press uh, invited uh, honorable prime minister shri narendra modi for the g7 summit in hiroshima in may uh, this year uh, honorable pm has accepted the invitation uh, i would close here and if there are any questions we'll try and take them please thank you thank you very much sir um, please introduce yourself and the organization that you represent before asking the question uh, let me begin with you yashi i saw your hand first Uh, this is Yeshi Seri from the New Indian Express. Uh, so, PM Kishida had said that there are uh, many unexploited regions in Northeast uh, which could be uh, collaborated upon. Can you elaborate a little on that? And also, what are the joint exercises he's spoken about between the US, Japan, and India? US, Japan, India. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, you had a question right before you. Please. Where did he mention this? In his talk. Okay, we we'll just had the talk just now. We'll have to look at that. Hi, yes, hey, please. Hi, I'm Leo Stehanada from Japanese News Agency Nikkei, and I would like to ask about the Bure Train project. Uh, did the two uh, leaders uh, agree on the schedule of the start of the uh, schedule of the Bure Train? Yeah. Thank you. Schedule of launch of the Bullet Train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, Sidan. Uh, hi, sir. Sidan from Vion. My question is. Uh, Uh, was chinese aggressiveness with india with japan part of the conversation between the two prime ministers that was not same question oh, i love that okay yeah no no behind you yeah go ahead huma so i am huma siddiqui from microphone not clear i am huma siddiqui from the financial express i just wanted to check in the defense uh, you talked about the two leaders discussing defense and security so did they also talk about joint production and did japan offered any new technology to india as far as defense is concerned offer new technology i think we'll come round next round so we'll just a few questions okay uh, i rishi couldn't quite capture the 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 preciseness of uh, you know your question on the joint exercises my understanding is that what they spoke about was the um, you know we do multiple uh, training programs as part of our bilateral and regional engagement 
which is different from the uh, training and exercises that we do in the field of defense. So I think what you're perhaps referring to uh, is, there is a set of recent exercises that took place between India and Japan, which I think for the first time also involved the two air force of the country. So I think that was a reference. A training, of course, is a, is a larger issue in terms of capacity building. And depending upon the domain of uh, uh, the training cooperation that you would talk about, uh, it would include uh, different partners. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, the reference that you're making to US is perhaps relating to that. But I think the reference to the exercises that was uh, made in the, in the discussion was more about the joint uh, India-Japan military exercises. In this case, the most recent being, I'm forgetting the name of it, but uh, Veer, Veer Gajian, which is essentially involving Air Force exercises for the first time. Uh, to, 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 on, the, on, the, on the Northeast question, you know, it's a, uh, it is not something new. Uh, India and Japan have been uh, talking about uh, in the larger vision of uh, Act East for us uh, in a sub-segment of how India and Japan can cooperate on this issue which essentially strengthens three, four key aspects of regional, sub-regional and bilateral engagement which links it through and through to uh, as part of Axe East. So there, for example, how do you build connectivity projects which link India's Northeast uh, to, let's say, uh, as the rest with the rest of the countries which f fall under the Act East framework. Uh, Bangladesh is one of the very important partners there. Several of the projects that we are doing, for example, through Myanmar, um, uh, uh, multimodal Kaladan, Kaladan transport project and other such uh, 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 road projects, bridge projects, which essentially link India uh, through the rest of the Northeast, uh, going further eastwards. This has, this has been an ongoing uh, point, not just of discussion between India and Japan, but frankly has been a point of substantive cooperation. We do an annual mechanism uh, for this and uh, the next meeting of that mechanism is going to be held, if I'm not wrong, towards the end of next month, uh, which is co-chaired by the Japanese ambassador here and uh, uh, foreign secretary as an institution from the foreign ministry. Uh, we essentially bring together all the stakeholders of the Northeast together and then see how uh, partnership projects, including development cooperation projects, infrastructure cooperation projects, etc., uh, can be uh, can be sort of moved uh, onto that. Now, uh, with regard to the question on the bullet train, I think from a, from a friend from Japanese media, I think the uh, there are many aspects of uh, India-Japan cooperation when it comes to high-speed railway uh, network. One is the project itself. Uh, and as I just mentioned to you, that the fourth tranche of the loan agreement uh, between India and Japan was, uh, was signed during this visit. Uh, both leaders took a assessment of the current status of implementation of the project, which I think is progressing well. Um, the leaders also assess that this project uh, is not only uh, uh, crucial uh, to build industrial cooperation between the two countries, but also it has a very strong link with the technology cooperation between the two countries. I think the HSR project is not just a high-speed train project. It is also a very high-impact technology cooperation project. Uh, I think both leaders uh, uh, made that assessment and uh, assessed the current status of uh, its progress, which, uh, as I said, has been progressing very well. Uh, specific um, um, timelines of launch, etc., did not come up for the conversation uh, between the two leaders. Uh, so, down to your question on 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 China, uh, the. 
the two leaders as i mentioned uh, during their uh, uh, luncheon meeting also spoke about uh the ongoing developments uh, in our region and also globally and naturally as part of that those the, those discussions they spoke about the the challenges that we face in the region one to how india and japan and other like minded countries can work together to address those challenges three uh, not just focus on challenges but also focus on cooperation particularly in the wider expanse of indo pacific how do you take the other countries of the indo pacific together and and that is not just uh, and that is that is cut across several domains so for example how do you partner within the indo pacific to build resilient and trustworthy supply chains for example uh, how do you come together to uh, to mitigate some of the uh, uh, challenges that the development template of many of the countries of the indo pacific face in terms of the debt burden etc on them so all that formed part of a larger uh, uh, larger uh, uh, broad platform of discussion uh, on in so far as the region uh, and sub region specifically and the larger uh, field of indo pacific is concerned uh uma uh, siddiqui ji to your question on the defense security uh, uh, elements uh, the the two prime ministers did speak about uh, uh, very successful meeting of the 2 plus 2 that is the defense minister and foreign ministers uh, together meeting uh, i think it was uh, sometime uh, last year but uh, when it came to uh, different uh, segments of cooperation in the field of defense uh, prime minister shinrendra modi uh, clearly put on the table Uh, that one of the areas of uh, a very strong cooperation between india and japan could be uh, co innovation co design co creation uh, and uh, you know these words are not put across uh, in terms of uh, these discussions as a as a as a branding words these are words which uh, which uh, have a very strong underpinning uh policy underpinning on the indian side of uh, atmanirbharta in the field of defense and uh, atmanirbharta not as an as an isolationist feature but atmanirbharta which can be built in partnership with other countries and in this case that partnership and that partner particular in this case being japan uh they did speak about uh, uh, what more india and japan can do are uh, going forward uh, uh no specific equipment or platforms were discussed but technology as a wider spectrum uh, you know how do you uh, work on technology to move as bilateral partnership and exercises i've already spoken about training definitely uh, but this larger field of um, you know research design creation uh, uh, and the and the spectrum of what you can do in the field of defense is actually very large uh, and deep thank you thank you sir uh, you had a question no sorry you had akhilesh go ahead so i am akhilesh son from sansar tv as you said that you talked about g7 priorities and g20 priorities so what are the converging points between the priorities of both the countries well, i mean the leadership of the both the countries Okay. and what any unanimity of uh, uh, view on russia ukraine war sorry you unanimity of view view on russia okay. maha so my first question microphone is, closer uh, sir during the foreign ministers meeting of the quad the japanese foreign minister had uh, given a reference to the beatles and spoken about <laughs> how they can uh, work together but also with others today again we have seen prime minister kishida talking about uh, expanding cooperation in the indo pacific has japan expressed its desire to include more countries in the quad <coughs> and sir second question is not related to japan but pertinent at the moment because there are reports right now that the indian consulate in san francisco has been vandalized by some khalistani groups uh, would you respond to that because we are seeing these uh, uh, incidents happening in some parts of the a uh, country in fact uh, on uk the uh, dcm was also summoned uh that's not really in the domain of this but i'll let us decide oh we had a few uh, one side i give you the floor then shishank 
Uh, thank you for your time, Foreign Secretary. I'm Shashank Matu from the Mint. So the Prime Minister mentioned semiconductors as a particular area of focus for India and Japan in the field of emerging technology. Could you give us some sense of any specific investments that the Japanese are willing to put on the table given their strengths in chemicals and particular parts of the uh, semiconductor supply chain? Thank you. Okay. Pranay. You, you got to be sitting ideally, yeah. but uh, please. Uh, sir, Pranay Upadhyay, yeah, ABP News. Se. Uh, मेरा एक छोटा सा क्लैरिफिकेशन अखिलेश जी के सवाल से आगे ही है कि क्या रूस यूक्रेन युद्ध को खत्म करने को लेकर प्रयासों पर कोई बात हुई दोनों नेताओं के बीच में और जी सेवन का जो रवैया है वो जी ट्वेंटी की लीडरशिप पे और भारत में जो मेजबानी में होने वाला समिट है उसको प्रभावित ना करे इसको लेकर क्या कुछ सहमति बनी है और एक छोटा सा एक्सटेंशन सर इस चीज को लेकर कि दो के बाद से तीनों भारत और जापान ने मिलकर तीसरे देश के अंदर डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट पर कई बार बात की थी तो क्या उस पर कुछ प्रगति हुई है Sir, times now. Uh, you did mention uh, defense cooperation. Japan has committed. In fact, Prime Minister Kishida himself has committed to doubling the defense budget. If that actually happens, Japan will be the third largest spender on defense in the world. Now, keeping that in mind, and keeping all the issues about cooperation that you've spoken about, is there any plan? For Japan, or did this come up during the discussions of investing in the defense structures in India and making I, I, not just for India but, but for the world? I think also, I sir, answered that question. No, 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 no okay. not really. And uh, also, sir, oh, did the problem in Ladakh come up during the discussions? Last question. Yeah. No, sorry, I don't have any more time. I had given you the floor. Yes, go ahead. Tauki Rusan from Yamuri Shimban. Can I get the Tauki from from Yamuri Shimban? Can I get a reaction to the Kishida's speech about where he presented his Indo-Pacific plan? It was 15 minutes ago, 10 minutes. We're reading the speech. Yes, <laughs> sir. Floor is yours. आप अपना reaction बताएं मैं तो ज़्यादा उसमें रुचि रखता हूँ. So there are a few hands. If there's any other new topic, I'm willing. To. Similar question. Anything? You have something on Bloomberg? Yeah, please. Max, is there uh, something just? Uh, sir, uh, Shudhiranjan from Bloomberg. Just an associ associated question with what Pranay asked. Uh, we are getting to hear a lot about cooperation between G7 and G20. Is it that you know Japan is asking us to align our India's position more? And if so, what is the reaction? Similar to the first question, I think that's the first one. I think if only one person is standing up and asking a question, then first I will give the answer to him. Okay, fine. तो प्रणय जी जो आपका प्रश्न था यूक्रेन जी सेवन जी ट्वेंटी समावेशी विचारधारा प्राथमिकताएं ब्लूम्बक का भी थोड़ा लगभग एक ही प्रश्न है आपका दूसरा प्रश्न तीसरे देशों में सहयोग सहकार्य को लेके है देखिए जहाँ तक जी सेवन और जी ट्वेंटी का प्रश्न है जैसे कि मैंने अपनी प्रारंभिक टिप्पणी में भी कहा इस समय जी ट्वेंटी की अध्यक्षता भारत के पास है और जी सेवन की अध्यक्षता जापान के पास है तो जब जी सेवन और जी ट्वेंटी की अपनी अपनी अध्यक्षताओं को लेके बात हुई तो दोनों नेताओं ने अपनी अपनी प्राथमिकताओं क्या हैं उनकी तो भारतीय प्रधानमंत्री ने बड़े स्पष्ट रूप से कि जी ट्वेंटी की भारत की अध्यक्षता की हमारी क्या प्राथमिकता है वो स्पष्ट रूप से जापान के प्रधानमंत्री के सामने बिल्कुल विस्तारपूर्वक रखी इसी प्रकार से जापानीज प्रधानमंत्री ने भी जो उनकी प्राथमिकताएं जी ट्वेंटी की हैं वो सामने रखी स्वाभाविक है कि जब दो शिखर वार्ता के अंतर्गत जब दो नेताओं के बीच में वार्ता होती है तो उन प्राथमिकताओं में साझे प्रश्न क्या हैं उनके बारे में वार्ता होती है देखिए जी सेवन का जो एजेंडा है वो जी ट्वेंटी के एजेंडा से भिन्न है क्योंकि जिस तरह से जी सेवन की संरचना है और जी ट्वेंटी की जो संरचना है ना केवल देशों की संरचना बल्कि जो एजेंडा की भी संरचना है वो काफ़ी अलग है तो लेकिन एक बात तो इसमें स्पष्ट रूप से दोनों नेताओं में सहमति थी कि जहां तक ग्लोबल साउथ की वॉइस का प्रश्न है जहां तक उनके विचारों का प्रश्न है जहाँ तक उनके वाणी का प्रश्न है उन सब को जी uh, ट्वेंटी के एजेंडा के रूप में किसी ना प्रकार से किसी ना किसी प्रकार से शामिल करना ये पूरे वैश्विक हित में है इसको लेके एक स्पष्ट रूप से चर्चा हुई 
बाकी जैसे मैंने कहा कि जापानीज प्रधानमंत्री ने उनकी जी सेवन की क्या प्राथमिकताएं हैं वो सामने रखी और भारतीय प्रधानमंत्री ने जी ट्वेंटी की प्राथमिकता रखी स्वाभाविक है कि एक अच्छा अवसर है कि दोनों नेता जो हैं न केवल अपनी इन इन संस्थाओं के प्रति उनकी सोच उनकी प्राथमिकता क्या है उसको एक दूसरे के सामने प्रदर्शित करें प्रकाशित करें बल्कि अगर इस वार्ता के बाद अगर कुछ सहयोग समन्वय के कुछ पॉइंट्स निकलते हैं तो उसको आगे ले जाने की बात वो बात की बात है लेकिन जैसे कि मैंने कहा दोनों संस्थाओं की जो संरचनाएं हैं वो अलग हैं जहाँ तक तीसरे देशों में सहयोग और सहकार्य का आपका जो प्रश्न था देखिए ये आ, आ, जो आ, भारत जापान सहयोग पूरे इंडो पैसेफिक क्षेत्र में रीजनल पार्ट्स में सब रीजनल सेगमेंट्स में लार्जर ग्लोबल इंडो पैसेफिक सेगमेंट में उसमें कहीं ना कहीं पे भारत और जापान सहयोग किस प्रकार से दूसरे देशों की सहायता कर सकता है ये वार्ता में निहित है अपने आप में अब उसका प्रोजेक्ट का क्या स्वरूप हो उस स्वरूप को आगे कैसा बढ़ाया जाए वो देश देश से भिन्न होगा तो आए इसको मेरे हिसाब से एक प्रोजेक्ट के रूप में ना देखा जाए बल्कि एक कॉन्सेप्ट के रूप में देखा जाए क्योंकि उस कॉन्सेप्ट से जो फिर प्रोजेक्ट उभर के आते हैं वो उनकी वो नाना प्रकार के हो सकते हैं और उनका मुख्य आधार ये होगा कि किस दूसरे देश की क्या आवश्यकता उसके हिसाब से आगे बढ़ने का है अखिलेश जी जो अखिलेश आप योर क्वेश्चन ऑन द जी ट्वेंटी एंड जी सेवन आई थिंक आई हैव प्रीटी मच आंसर्ड विच इज दैट बोथ लीडर्स फोकस्ड ऑन देयर रिस्पेक्टिव प्रायोरिटीज ड्यूरिंग देयर प्रेजिडेंसी ऑफ their organizations which they are running india for g20 japan for g7 um, and uh, those priorities it is very important to develop a clear understanding of those priorities uh, of the perspective behind those priorities of what the key driving forces are for those priorities and see how you know uh, those priorities uh, can also enrich the discussions in the two platforms so when my prime minister speaks about digital transformation uh, digital public goods uh, sustainable lifestyles elements like these being the priorities of g20 not just uh, for india for g20 but also for the larger global south obviously that can enrich the uh, agenda for the g7 discussions also so i think i have answered this in detail but just as a as a part uh, elaboration of that one uh mahaji to your question uh, on the or rather your comment on uh, on the beatles etc look i am not musically inclined particularly to the western music so i would rather not uh, uh, comment on that but i think uh, suffice to say that uh, the question of expansion of quad in this conversation did not come up one two uh, all the quad members are very clear in their mind that quad needs to undergo a very very uh, 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 appropriate phase of consolidation uh, before uh, you know we look to uh, anything other than quad uh, i'll leave it at that with regard to the you know uk incident we have already put out yesterday evening late evening um, uh, india's response to it in which the UK uh, Deputy High Commissioner was summoned and was one demanding an explanation to ask to be uh, ask the uh, the culprits and the perpetrators of what happened at London yesterday to be uh, quickly arrested um, and prosecuted. We launched a strong protest and also uh, uh, clearly uh, indicated uh, to the British authorities uh, for the need for them to put up adequate security. at the at the uh, uk high commission uh shashank to your question i think on semiconductors was the question you see this uh, as i as i mentioned this uh, this domain of uh, innovation technology manufacturing the triangulation of these three 
of which uh, uh, of which uh, semiconductors is one of the very important domains because it captures the research segment obviously because of the very nature of the semiconductors uh, it captures the innovation part of it technology part of it and the coming together of the capacities of india and japan for its manufacturing in india prime minister did put forward very strongly uh, I, and i would add the related element of uh, a skill a skill uh, manpower especially on the uh, uh, as available on the indian side how that uh, interfaces with uh, with this segment so this was a an important topic of discussion between the two prime ministers uh, not just that it's also an important topic of uh, important element of cooperation uh, between india and japan we have been talking about cooperation in the field of semiconductors uh, for quite some time both in the research and development segment one two in terms of modernization of existing segments in india three in terms of uh, tapping the skill base available in india then and fourth naturally in terms of investment which uh, which uh, which which flow into it um <clears throat> shinjoy to to your question which i think is uh, partly a continuation of uh, huma ji's question on the 2 plus 2 defense etc uh prime minister modi uh, uh, and uh, prime minister kishida uh, talked about when they spoke about co innovation co design co creation one of the key elements of the conversation also was investment collaboration and investment partnership in this space and prime minister uh, modi made it very clear to prime minister kishida that uh, when it comes to uh, private sector investments in the field of defense when it comes to foreign direct investment in the field of defense those two sectors are uh, completely open in india the japanese companies are not only invited but are also encouraged uh, to harness the opportunity and advantages uh, that are uh, inherent in the uh, indian manufacturing ecosystem the policy framework liberalization that government of india has undertaken in the field of defense link it to make in india not just for india but also for the rest of the world uh, also do it in a manner that the products manufactured here are part of uh, not just regional supply chains but also global supply chains and also which helps in building trusted supply chains uh, uh, in the field of uh, defense uh i think uh, he wanted to know what your well as i just said uh, <laughs> you have yourself heard the uh, prime minister of japan uh, very clearly speak on his vision for the free and open indo pacific i think his speech speaks for itself uh, i don't think it's appropriate for me to uh, to comment on, uh, on on the on 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 such an important uh, policy statement by a leader of a foreign visiting dignitary of ours uh ladakh specifically did not come up for discussion but the two prime ministers as i said did speak about challenges that both uh, our countries face in the region uh, and also how 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 we can work together to strengthen our partnership thank you very thank you very thank you very not rush i think he he did mention initial uh thank you very much sir Th- thank you also to ambassador cg cb george and uh, joint secretary and uh, dr shilpa gambole thank you all for joining thank Good you afternoon. very much